Watch this before you choose to become an aircraft maintenance engineer. The first one I'm going to talk about is aircraft maintenance engineer should be a long term career for you. Guys, the reality is as an aircraft maintenance engineer, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of responsibility and a lot of training. And this thing takes years. You just trying to get your license to Shell in Canada. It's going to take you at least four years before you can get your license. And after getting your license, you're going to be going through more training more qualifications you have to get your type course and those stuff take years it takes years 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 so you're investing a lot and this is why i tell people right you got to understand that when you start this career path right from school two years and once you get your license it's going to take another two years before you get your type course right those are long-term career and this is why aircraft maintenance engineering is actually considered as a diploma a degree program in a lot of countries right it's actually considered as an actual engineering program and that is because you invest a lot you invest as much as an engineer as a mechanical engineer is going to invest and not even talk about the responsibility right and this is why i tell people before you choose it as a career path you have to have that mentality that this is a going to be a long-term career yes you can also develop your skills you can go into more into like you can always try to get something higher right you can go into management you can go to a team lead you can go to you can even start your own business but at least as if at the funda foundational level you want to make sure this is going to be a long-term career for you right like i said you can also develop your skills and get more qualification and promotion right on top of your ame but on the base level at the base level this should be a long-term career for you and this is something you will notice a lot of people that get to the industry always do the until they retire you know even when they retire they actually do contracting on the side and that is because they have invested a lot into before they even get their license right you guys call people that are in school right now can testify you just doing your courses in school it takes a lot a lot of responsibility a lot of fucking education a lot of studying and not to even talk about where you get your license right so you got to have that mentality before you choose your aircraft message engineering as a career you want to make sure this is going to be a long-term career for you because i don't want you to just get into something that you invest a lot in and five years from now you're thinking about changing career like what's the whole point of doing all those schools for what is the whole point of studying for your exam what is the whole point of trying to get your license you know if you are not going to do it for long term right so that is the first thing i usually tell people the second thing i'm going to talk about is how to become an aircraft maintenance engineer in canada so in canada there are two ways to become an ama the first way is by going to school which is a two-year program right and after you graduate you got to work as an apprentice for two years and six months then you can write your cars examination your license examination then you get your license as an aircraft license aircraft maintenance engineer the second way is by working as an apprentice for four years then after working as an apprentice for four years now you can write your um, four exams to get your license which one do i prefer i usually prefer you going to school and the reason why is when it comes to job finding companies usually prioritize people that have an educational background it's so much easier to get your license guys the four exams i'm talking about it's not easy <laughs> it takes a lot of studying a lot of effort and it's not something that would just take a year it takes sometimes it takes a year and two years so if you're going to go through all those hustling and bowsling you might as well just invest that money in going to school get the education and then become then get to your like your apprenticeship then get your license so that is how to become an aircraft maintenance engineer i always prefer you going through the education around the third one i'm going to talk about is choosing the right ame license so when it comes to aircraft maintenance engineering there are different type of licenses right there's the m1 um european company countries call it b1 there's m2 european countries call it b2 there is um e license which is the avionic side and there's s license when it comes to choosing the right license you want to go to something that you have passion for right so me personally when i was little i've always had passion for more of mechanical stuff like i tell you guys in my story i've always wanted to become an aeronautic aeronautic engineer so i've always had passion for something in uh, mechanical i've never been a fan of electrical so if i chose e-license then you know that is not the best way to to know that is not the best um category for me right because i never had passion i never loved e-license so you want to go to something that um that you have passion for at least and when it comes to job opportunity especially for people that are going to be choosing m me i usually recommend you go for m2 m2 license because the technology is changing the world is changing right there people are companies are investing more in 
M2 aircraft and that is why there is more job opportunities for people that have M2 aircraft. So if your goal is to make money, if your goal is to get a job as fast as possible, if your goal is to eventually start your own business, your own contracting um, um, company, right? Um, the most beneficial um, license to get um, when it comes to M1 and M2, I usually recommend M2, right? And when it comes to avionics, yes, there is opportunities for e-license, but it's not as much as M2 license right now. And like I said, in the future, technology is changing. You can see a lot of aircraft are you know, diverting more into like the fly-by-wire. So in the future, I definitely see e-license getting even more opportunities, right? But I usually recommend you at least getting your M2 if you're gonna choose M1 between M1 and M2, right? Like at least get your M2 license because there is more opportunities for you and there's more chances for you to grow. You know what I mean? So the third one, the fourth one I'm gonna talk about is looking for a job. When it comes to looking for a job as an aircraft maintenance engineer, especially as an apprentice who just finished school, guys, it's going to take a lot of effort i know i have preached 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 out there's a lot of job opportunities for aircraft medicine engineer but the reality is there is not a lot of job opportunities that can accommodate all the apprentices graduating every year you have thousands of apprentices graduating every year there's not thousands of jobs every year right that's just the reality but there are ways you can implement there are strategies you can implement to make your job no process faster like i told you guys getting a mentor when you're in school right there are ways you can connect to people that already have licenses people that are already working in industry linkedin is a really good um, example right you can connect to people send them a dm right tell them you're your apprentice you're about to graduate you know i'm mean? trying to create a relationship with people even your classmates you want to be able to create a relationship with them because when you graduate those are probably the same people that will get you a job me personally all the jobs all the opportunities i have gotten throughout my whole career came from people that i knew personally either my classmates or people that i've worked with right and that's just the reality and when it comes to finding a job guys the reality is you have to be ready to relocate i have said it hundreds of time that is just the reality you can't just be in one location applying to one location and expecting you to get a job as fast as possible in that same location right there's a lot of competition everywhere but getting that first job is going to require a lot of effort a lot of ability to relocate and that's just the reality the next one i'm going to talk about is what to expect on your first day as an aircraft maintenance engineer apprentice when it comes to your first day of working as an apprentice especially your first couple month the reality is you're not going to be working alone you're going to be working with a licensed person and the reason why is companies that have to pay you up to a licensed person so that person can actually teach you how the company operates you know in terms of safety measure you know in terms of you know not giving you more knowledge of how to read your amm your ipc how to work how to use your talk rights how to use calibrated tools right and not only that they they actually paying you up the license person so that person can actually eval um give them um answers when it comes to like probation evaluation right so like i told you guys the person you're going to be working with is probably going to be the person that will give the management information about you because the management are not really watching you 24 7 it is the person you're working with right and not only that right the reason why you know the, the reality is on your first couple months you are probably going to be doing a lot of shitty jobs all right guys when i got my first apprentice job i was doing a lot of shitty job i was in the prc lubrication panels everybody has everybody has to do the same thing everybody has to go through that process but you also got to understand just for a short period of time once companies get more comfortable with you they see the ability you see your skills they can start giving you more interesting job right and when it comes to your logbook guys you have to make sure you're you're on ground with your logbook because at the end of the day you're not going to be making a lot of money as an apprentice right which i'm going to talk about to my next point as an apprentice you're not going to make a lot of money you start making more money once you get your license once you get your type courses right so that's why you got to take your logbook series starting off your first day next one i'm going to talk about is the salary as an apprentice as an apprentice guys the reality is starting off as an apprentice you're not going to get a lot of money you know and, and that's just reality you know now the pay is even way more better when i started my own career i was getting like 19 dollars an hour my was even better people started off with like 12 dollars 16 dollars an hour you know what i mean but the economy is changing things are getting more expensive right and that's why companies have increased wages right and i think it's gonna even get more better now apprentices are getting 29 dollars an hour starting off with no experience 30 dollars an hour right but 
you might be unlucky and get a company that'll pay you 25 23 dollars an hour you got to understand you have to build that skills you have to be that reputation you have to be that qualification in terms of getting your license your type courses to get more pay and once you get your license made many doors a lot of doors open right even better ways to get your, your your type course you can get a lot of more opportunities that's just reality but starting off pay it's not gonna be the best but like i said this is a long-term career for us this is a long this is a marathon for most people right so you got to be focused more in the future because once you get a license that type courses now you're going to start having more pay the next one i'm going to talk about is working as an aircraft medicine engineer the shift right the reality is the shift is really good i usually tell people that we have one of the best schedule ever <laughs> i you know when it comes to comparing to other career like if you guys don't know most companies do offer this schedule called 455 so you work four days get five days off or work five days get five days off work five days get five days off right um but the downside is for the most part you're gonna be working night shift a lot of people don't like it but that's just the reality the, the reason why is planes are flying during the day planes are not flying at night right you know what i mean so when they come to the hangar or the, the land in, the, in a specific destination they need people to do service check routine check right and most of the time they're always coming at night and that is why aircraft maintenance engineers most of us have to do night for at least 10 years right and maybe even in a company whereby seniority matters maybe after 10 15 years your seniority can be top there and you can always um choose date but apart from the night shift I personally think we have one of the best schedule like doing your four or five days like i'm on my four days off right now I'm making this video right i'm making this video because i have four days off so it gives you the ability to actually do stuff there's a lot of times especially during winter time i travel a lot right me having that five four days off give me the ability to do those stuff people that have family you can do a lot of stuff during your five four or five days i know you're gonna hear a lot of stories people complain about the schedule but i'm gonna i'm going to tell you guys the reality i personally think we have one of the best schedule right and the next one i'm going to talk about is aircraft medicines engineering can be physical sometimes this is just the reality being physical does not mean you're going to be doing physical job like a con like construction worker every day right or working in a factory but sometimes you might have to lose a little bit of muscle to twerk for example you're twerking the wheels right you're twerking at least um, 435 foot pounds right you're talking at least 200 foot pounds right that takes a lot of you know physical strength right sometimes you have to install some components that can be physical but is it going to be physical every day no that's just the reality some nights you're going to have some chill nights sometimes you're going to have some physical night but it's just for you to guys be ready so you guys can know what to expect once you finish your school and you're about to start your career working as an apprentice the last one i'm going to talk about is tooling guys when it comes to buying tools you have to invest in tools with experience right i usually tell people my story when i started on my career i wasted a lot of money thousands of dollars just buying tools i never used right you know what i mean and this is something that's one of the reasons why i came on youtube to educate people so that way you guys don't make the same mistake i made right when it comes to tools you want to invest with tools with the express so that you are starting off as an apprentice you're going to buy the basic tools so you want to buy your wrenches your screwdriver really basic stuff right but once you start getting your license start working with time once you start like my mentor usually tell me something right if you ask for a tool or if you borrow a tool more than two or three times you definitely need that tool right you need to buy that tool right so that's how you build your tool with experience my toolbox right now is something i built with experience because i have worked on with year and i've worked for like, you know, eight seven eight, eight nine years now right so i have built my toolbox with experience so but when i started off as an apprentice i didn't have that many information right i was just buy random tools wasting a lot of money so you want to make sure you buy the basic ones and once you start working you can start building your tools the express so these are the few things i usually advise so that the few things you need to know before you you choose aircraft medicine engineer as a career guys aircraft medicine engineer is one of those careers i tell people that it's a, it's a good one people have their own bitter side of it and just like every other career there's good sizes pros and cons right nothing is perfect but guys overall this is a career path that you can actually make a good living from gives you a lot of opportunities if you want to get into management if you want to get into even ceo if you want to start your own company right if you want to start 
channels like youtube channel educating people right it gives you opportunity and that's just the reality i'm here to tell you guys this is coming from someone that came as an immigrant someone that I had to figure everything out myself and i'm happy i chose this as a career path i've never been in a situation whereby i regret choosing this as a career path that's just the reality and um so these are the few things you need to know before choosing an aircraft maintenance engineer as a, as a career path guys if you're an apprentice right now who just graduated from school and you're finding it hard to get a job you tried thousands hundreds of applications you're getting no calls guys i can help you out build a really good resume i can help you out build the perfect resume to get you a job interview i can show you the pathways on how to apply for a job yes it's not going to be a one day process you're not going to get a job in one day but with the pathway i will show you with the way how we will guide you i can show you the things to do the steps to take that will get you a job as fast as possible and when it comes to interview i can also prep you up with interview even an apprentice that need that type of help you need someone to guide you through in terms of job application resume building and interview preparation click the link in the description and book a consultation and let me see how i can help you out for you guys that are new to my channel my name is peter i am a licensed aircraft methods engineer and i have hundreds of videos regarding aircraft methods engineer on my channel so if you need more information about aircraft medicine engineering please don't forget to check out those other videos on my channel if you guys are new to my channel please don't forget to share and subscribe love you guys